Hello students, uh, welcome back to our video lectures. Uh, today uh, we are going to discuss about the history of psychiatric social work. Um, it's a very long history, but uh, uh, still we will discuss it uh, in, a, uh, in a brief manner. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Monimudha Medhi, and I'm the assistant professor in social work program, uh, Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Assam Dalton University. Uh, I hope uh, uh, you have understood the previous video that is on psychiatric social work and we have discussed about uh, what psychiatric social work is we have discussed about what is uh, an abnormal behavior and we have also discussed about uh, various uh, scopes and functions of psychiatric social work so today uh, we will discuss about uh, the uh, history of psychiatric social work let's dwell in <clears throat> so so as we have known from our previous video that psychiatric social work is basically a specialized branch of social work which concerns with theoretical as well as clinical work and the knowledge of psychiatry, which primarily deals with problems of the mind and associated disorders. The essential purpose of psychiatric social work is to help the people with problems of mind and, mind and behavior problems, right? Uh, and we can you know, precisely say that mind and uh, brain, solution, brain and their solutions and uh, it's a very, very, uh, very interesting branch, actually, psychiatric social work, which I feel, um, and uh, which especially deals with people and their uh, and their problems with behavior, and uh, and it is uh, very much important to uh, treat every individual. And we will basically apply all the casework principles here, which you have already studied in your first year. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's dwell into the history, you know, in brief. Um, Basically, psychiatric social work is, in West, is a Western concept and uh, it can be traced back to mid 1800s. But we will also simultaneously discuss uh, since 500 BC, that is the ancient period. Okay. So, in the beginning, uh, the forerunner of contemporary hospital was the almhouse, which served for poor, ill persons, orphans, and mental health. Okay. Uh, which we can see in Britain, uh, that is United Kingdom, UK, or England. So medical social workers in Britain and Ireland were originally known as hospital almoners, okay, or lady almoners. And uh, until the profession was officially renamed medical social work in the 1960s, okay. In 1895, Mary Stewart came, uh, became the first lady almoner in Britain with her appointment to the Royal Free Hospital in London for a three month trial period. Some sources credit Annie Cummins also as the mother of almoners as she had, she had the ability and funding to first establish a comprehensive social work service at St. Thomas Hospital in London in 1909. In 1945, the Institute of Almoners in Britain, Britain was formed, which in 1964 was renamed as the Institute of Medical Social Workers. So uh, from then on, uh, uh, the, I mean, the medical social workers have walked in and later on uh, uh, divided into medical social work and psychiatric social work. The Institute was one of the founder organizations in the British Association of Social Workers, which was formed in 1970. So in Britain, uh, medical social workers were transferred from national health services into local authority social services and became known as hospital social workers. So let's, uh, this is just a modern history. Let's go into the ancient times. What, what was there in the ancient times? Okay. Uh, where mental illness was thought to be caused by demons or animal spirits taking over the body. So uh, that was basically the term mental illness, okay? Uh, those were which, are, which was caused by demons or animal spirits. Uh, this was also uh, true for a prehistoric man that a bronze statue formerly displayed in Fort Worth Museum of Science and History depicted two men holding down another while using rudimentary tools to puncture his skull. So this display placard read that the ancient man believed that mental illness was caused by supernatural factors that may be released from the ill person's skull. So that, that method was basically called a strephination, which we have discussed here. <clears throat> that uh, so they will, uh, <clears throat> if they, they found someone with a mental uh, illness, or you know, they will think that it is uh, caused due to some demonic activity or supernatural factors, and that person's skull will be Hole. Uh, they will do a hole with some instruments. They will uh, they will dig a hole in the skull of the person and let the spirit go out. So this was basically a very we are speaking in a uh, of speaking about a very ancient time. So this this happened. 
Uh, there are other cultures which uh, forms uh, which uh, which use early forms of brain surgery to cure or elevate number of misunderstood maladies or mental illnesses. Okay, uh, there were there were treatment for mental illness was exorcism also or torture, which you have already seen in so many movies and uh, read in so many books. Okay, uh, taught, uh, the the mental ill mentally ill person was so much tortured and exorcised actually. While more cost, uh, more costly approach ex exorcism is still used as means of treating misdiagnosed mental illness today also, and that we can see in very much uh, you know rural places where still exorcism is practiced. If some demonic uh, uh, devil has come in uh, as if uh, and uh, uh, to tell something to the people, and they are exorcised with the help of even maybe black magic or any kind of magic. Okay. Then, uh, uh, as we have discussed, the word trepanation or trepanning, which consists of a small instrument being used to bore holes in the skull, and it would allow the evil spirits to leave the possessed person. The process was known as trepanation, and the abuse the uh, this abuse the body badly enough, and the spirit will want to leave it. So that was the basic idea of trepanation, to make the spirit leave through the hole in the skull. Then, in the 450 BC, where it is known as the golden age for Greece. Uh, the, uh, the great physician and the father of modern medicine, Hippocrates, was there. Hippocrates. Okay, uh, he denied he denied that deities and demons cause mental illness. Okay, he was one of the very first who uh, told that uh, demons does not cause mental illness, and it, 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 he viewed abnormal behavior in illness in general as having internal causes, and thus having biological natures or attributes. See such a modern thinking, right? Uh, he was. Uh, uh, he he used treatment uh, to modify the environment okay like life exercise or you know uh, environmental modification so like that and uh, he also believed patients that need to choose health over mental illnesses and uh, he also gave the hippocratic oath which is known to the medical uh, people then uh, <clears throat> he 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 was uh, uh, you know he he basically was a very modern thinker and uh, but uh, even though in, in ancient times he was uh, he was very much a, a, a non-believer of uh, demonology or uh, you know a cause of mental illness uh, as with demons, right? So uh, that was a very uh, what do you call a, a, a very uh, a very modern thinking in those times. Next, uh, from then on, it was basically a a, 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 a a period of exorcism or. You know, not much importance was given to mental health. Okay, so it was during the 1800s where mental health really was uh, reformed. Okay, so uh, uh, the first in uh, Benjamin Rush, uh, who was there, he published the first American textbook on psychiatry. Okay, then uh, he believed the cause of mental illness was exposure to severe psychological and social stresses. Uh, due to stress, it happens, there, which can be very much psychological and social. And uh, treatment was moral management, which focused on patient social, individual, and occupation needs. Okay. There's also someone called Philip Pinel, who was uh, a Frenchman uh, and was a very early reformer in the proper treatment of mentally ill individuals. And like Benjamin Rush, he uh, you know he believed mental illness was caused by excessive psychological and social stresses, and uh, advocated that the mentally ill be treated with sympathy, uh, empathy, and compassion. Okay, he was also uh, known as one of the founders in psychiatry. The next one is Dorothea Dix, which, uh, who, who was uh, 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 a great, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, so one of the most uh, uh, preferred psychiatric social workers, uh, although the term social workers was not given at that time. Uh, he, uh, she helped, uh, you know, th helped establish 32 mental hospitals throughout the United States of America. Uh, in 1845, uh, he, uh, the first public mental health hospital in Pennsylvania, that is the Harrisburg State Hospital, was formed. Then in 1847, uh, the first state mental institution in Illinois was established. And in 1856, the uh, first state mental institution in North Carolina opened and named in her honor. Okay. So, Dorothea Dix is a very, uh, it's a very uh, important name in the uh, reformers in mental health treatment. So during the 1900s, uh, there was major breakthrough, breakthrough uh, and uh, there was discovery of biological causes also. Okay, uh, you know, symptoms of syphilis, paralysis, insulin, and death were also included in, uh, in, in mental illnesses 
yeah, or maybe the cause of mental illnesses. Okay, and the treatment was to infect, you know, suffer, uh, you know, uh, treatment with uh, <coughs> syphilis or malaria was also uh, given major importance. Okay, um, there was Emil Kreplin who developed a very a very uh, systematic classification a classification system of mental disorders. Uh, it was a uh, that's that's how DSM was formed. You know, it was a precursor to DSM. That is diagnostic and statistical manual, which you, you will be studying in our next uh, in our uh, simultaneous videos. Uh, he classified psychosis into two forms: that is, manic depression and dementia. Okay, uh, both both are kind of psycho psychiatric uh, psych uh, you know psychiatric disorders, which you will be studying later. Um, recognize that uh, he recognized that different types of disorders have disorders have different outcomes. Okay, and uh, he also Im gave importance in the brain pathology. Then we come to the uh, we come to the most uh, prominent personality uh, in psychology that is Sigmund Freud who was also known as the uh, father of psychoanalysis okay he was he basically developed the psychoanalytic theory and uh, psychosexual development of individual the the theory of psychological development in terms of stages through life okay he was uh, he was a very uh, you know believer in unconscious processes and motives and urges that, that can form various behavioral difficulties. Okay, then he also developed a doctor-patient paradigm, uh, so which which was uh, later known as you know counseling. Uh, also, uh, the doctor was viewed as being in power position, and the patient was a sick individual who would take the doctor's words as an unquestionable fact. But later, it became more neutral. Okay, then we come into B. Uh, B. F. Skinner, uh, who was a who is, was known as a father of radical behaviorism. Uh, he, he, he he gave more stress in behavior okay uh, believe that any behavior that was reinforced or rewarded would be more likely to increase or recur or any behavior that was either not reinforced was punished would be more likely to decrease or be extinguished so he was basically a believer in behaviorism you know you, you, if you can show uh, rewarding uh, if you if you can give some reinforcement or uh, give some reward the person will behave accordingly if you do not, or you know, if you punish the person, that, that person, uh, you know, uh, uh, behave differently. So, uh, with this, this will be more studied in our next uh, next two classes. Uh, you know, he uh, he was also a, a demonstrator in operant conditioning, which will also be studied uh, using Skinner box. Actually, uh, he did the, this demonstration with rats. Um, next came uh, Albert Bandura, who 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 was more into developing the social learning theory okay then uh, he was suggested that he could uh, you know learning can be based upon what uh, you know in, in a model okay that is basically he developed social learning theory that is through imitation or modeling if uh, we generally imitate persons right uh, what uh, we, we generally imitate our parents or we generally uh, in, i mean imitate our uh, film stars so uh, basically social learning theory was the precursor of that then we come into Albert Ellis, uh, which which was one of the most prominent personalities during the modern era. Uh, he, uh, he uh, uh, a very renowned psychiatrist. Uh, he was a believer that we, you know, he, he believes that we get depressed and develop other mental illnesses, which uh, because of very much faulty thinking. Okay, so he 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 developed a therapy called rational limited behavior uh, behavioral therapy, which we'll be learning in our, uh, uh, you know. Uh, classes uh, that is in third semester and fourth semester as well then uh, uh, this this therapy use is used mainly in anxiety disorders and mood disorders okay so and uh, we also see carl rogers uh, he 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 basically developed the client or person centered therapy uh, he was a humanistic uh, he he was more of a humanistic believer uh, he, he believed that innate goodness of all people in the is the and in the ability of all people to grow and lead constructive lives are are basically positive. So uh, uh, he you know the psychologist is seen as someone who is very who is a very skilled listener and who is someone who is not judgmental and certainly not the powerful or omniscient. Okay. Then uh, what happened in India during these times? Okay, uh, the, the very much less importance was given to important branch of health promotion. Okay, in during uh, since ancient times regarding mental health and psychiatry, um, 
you know, it was the it was the Tata Institute of Social Sciences which was uh, pioneering in this field since 1936, and most of the national health programs are, are running at a snail pace due to non-use of field of medicine, right? So, you know, mostly in, in in all sectors we see that mental health is basically not uh, given importance, right? So, it was so much important in India to give importance in med in medical and psychiatric uh, health of an individual. So, uh, so, so basically, in 1937, Tata Institute of Social Sciences started graduate course, uh, and uh, in 1938, a full-time social worker was employed in the company to look after the well-being of employees as welfare and neighborhood of the community. So, since then, the the importance of social workers came into view. Okay. Uh, in 1939, Tuberculosis Association sent a group of students into volunteering for training in this. Then. Uh, in 1947, the government of India appointed, appointed a board committee, uh, which stressed so much uh, importance, uh, which, which stressed more in, in importance of mental health. And then, uh, in 1930, in 1948, uh, uh, Yerbada Mental Hospital was established, where people were admitted uh, uh, were very poor and was affected, uh, you know, psychologically. Then, in, in JJ Hospital, in 1959. Uh, you know, MSW was uh, appointed in in the psychiatric social uh, psychiatric department, okay. And in 1955, the first medical and psychiatric social work was employed by Style Guidance Clinics and uh, College of Nursing, run by the Ministry of Health. So, uh, as we can see, uh, a lot of development has come into place in psychiatric social work, right? And the psychiatric social work, uh, in conclusion, I would say that psychiatric social work does not have a very long history, but most of it are shared with the history of psychology and psychiatry so, so you will find similar history in psychology and psychiatry as well but you know uh, the concept uh, itself uh, that is psychiatric social work is kind of modern okay and it has a very bold future in the country like india because uh, you know we can see uh, the, the rising population in the country uh, um, and uh, you know the, the mental health problems have come up there are lots of cases of suicide, uh, lots of uh, rape victims are there, burn victims are there, and uh, you know, who has faced so much of trauma and uh, and utter need of such psychiatric social work is so much important in today's uh, life. You know, uh, 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 you know, the need of psychiatric social workers are indeed rising in India and uh, looking into the coronavirus pan pandemic also, we can see so much stress in people, right? Uh, may, may it be uh, uh, employed persons or may it be unemployed persons. So, it, uh, so psychiatric health has become so much important in today's life, and we should give uh, more importance to, psych uh, to our psychological health along with our physical health, right? So <clears throat> that is this is where psychiatric social work becomes so much important in our lives. So I hope uh, yes, uh, the terms uh, of history we have what we have discussed here is uh, not so easy. I, I agree. But, uh, you know, if you can uh, retain some of it, it will be very helpful. Um, it, is, uh, it is not that hard. Plus, we will, we will also discuss uh, in, in details in our classes. Um, and uh, let's hope that you have understood at least something from this uh, uh, video. And uh, hope to um, meet you with our next video. Okay, we will see about changing trends in medical and psychiatric social work. Okay. So uh, thank you for uh, listening to me and uh, hope you have understood something and please be ready with, uh, uh, with, uh, with questions you know, which will be discussed in the classes and uh, please go through all the notes and uh, be prepared. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you again.